Choosing the right GNSS antenna for your drone project, a comparison between the MLID RS2 and the DJI DRTK2. This is Ian Perry, Project Supervisor here at CanDrone. My task here today is to describe the key differences between these two RTK antennas and help you understand which one is most appropriate for your project needs. Every drone consists of a set of GNSS antennas mounted on the airframe, which communicate to the full constellation of satellites when the drone is airborne. These antennas allow the drone's camera payload to get a reading of the drone's location. Precise latitude and longitude coordinate information is encoded or geotagged onto photographs or LiDAR data so that these data sets may be used to develop spatially accurate mapping products. But the drone's antennas don't often provide high accuracy geotags. The coordinates may only be accurate to within about two meters, and this is not acceptable if you need to align a drone's data set to your client's pre-existing drone data or their independent survey control network. To achieve such alignment, an additional ground-based GNSS antenna is needed to correct the drone's antenna, either in real time during flight or post-flight during data processing. This is where these devices come into play. These antennas are set up at time of flight and either communicate directly with the drone throughout the flight, known as RTK or real-time kinematic, or they can log RTCM information from satellites to be used for correcting drone data later on, known as PPK or post-process kinematic. So what are the similarities and differences between these two antennas? To start, these two antennas both provide RTK and PPK solutions for drone mapping projects. They both connect to a drone for real-time corrections at time of flight, and they both log RTCM data for use later on in post-processing. The DJI antenna is part of the drone's native ecosystem and thus connects seamlessly via a radio link. Very little setup time is required to get connected and staying connected is usually no problem within a few hundred meters. Now the MLED antenna, being third party, can only connect to a DJI drone via the internet using what's called NTRIP. NTRIP is Networked Transport of RTCM via Internet Protocol. Traditional NTRIP requires that both the antenna and the drone's controller have internet connectivity for communicating RTK corrections. However, MLED offers local NTRIP, which entails a local MLED Wi-Fi signal over which RTK corrections can be broadcast to the drone's controller without the need for an internet connection. Now let's talk about the user interface. DJI uses the drone's controller as the interface for the DRTK2. You move into the RTK tab and access a few options, including entering in the base position, but there's very little you can do to manipulate the system beyond that. RTCM logging is taking place automatically. You can't stop or start that function with DJI. Now that's nice on one hand because it means that logging RTCM cannot be forgotten in the pilot's workflow. The MLED, by contrast, has an extensive user app that allows you to access numerous features. The app is designed for both base and rover functionality, so not only can you enter a known base position and start and stop logging of RTCM, but you can start a survey of ground control points once you have a second antenna paired with this MLED. Now, two MLED antennas can communicate either via the internet and NTRIP or using the radio antennas provided. Now let's talk more about rover functionality. According to DJI's user manual for this device, it can be used as a handheld rover for collecting ground control, but only in mode three, which is compatible with the Agris line of DJI drones and the Phantom 4 RTK. From searching around in the Pilot 2 app that is standard with the DJI Matrice and Mavic series, it's not clear to me that this rover functionality is available with those platforms. But should you get hold of an Agris or Phantom 4 and enable mode three on the DRTK2, you could use NTRIP 
with either another local base broadcasting over the internet or a network of continuously operating reference stations to get rover functionality. So what about broadcasting RTK corrections online? The MLED uses NTRIP to broadcast to a drone, and that also goes for communicating with another MLED as a rover. With the DRTK2, it is evident from the DJI user manual that the LAN port makes this device capable of broadcasting RTK corrections online, which could then be relayed to a drone. This would allow you to fly beyond the range of the radio link between drone and antenna. You would plug a cable into the antenna's LAN port and then into a computer. You would need to set up a caster using a GNSS application such as RTK Lib, which is freely available. Emlet has its own caster on the Emlet website. This is where you register an account free of charge and set up the parameters such as the address, the mount point and the password, which will then go into the drone's controller once you have your MLED connected to the internet. The MLED can broadcast over a local area network, but is more handily used with either a SIM card or pairing with a cellular device or a Wi-Fi network to broadcast RTK corrections. I want to finish by touching on some physical features here. The Emlet comes with an industry standard 5 8 threaded hole, and this means that the tri brack on a tripod are used. This gives you high precision in leveling the device, as with other survey industry equipment. You do have to measure the antenna height manually, which could introduce human error. DJI has taken measuring out of the equation with a 1.8 meter fixed antenna height from the bottom of the pole to the antenna phase center. This makes the antenna incompatible with traditional tripods, but it is compatible with a bipod and DJI's own tripod configuration. It's worth mentioning that in some jurisdictions, a continuously operating reference station as part of a cores network may be available to the public, allowing anyone with a drone to access a base station near where they are flying. You can enter your account details into a DJI controller and get RTK fix on your drone without setting up a local base. In some rare cases, you could conceivably get away with this on every mapping mission where you live within reasonably close proximity to a continuously operating reference station. The catch is that you must maintain internet connectivity to your drone controller at all times. But with Starlink service being readily available in most places, this is not a particularly large hurdle. You just have to be aware that a local base station may provide more accurate GNSS data than a core's antenna located many kilometers away from where you are flying. So we've compared the MLED Reach RS2 with the DJI DRTK2. These are both RTK antennas that can be used in conjunction with your drone flight to improve the accuracy of your mapping products. We've compared and contrasted the functionality of both of these. And overall, I provide a little bit of a summary of what I think each one offers in strengths and a little bit in weakness. The Emlet is very versatile. Uh, you can use it as a standalone system to pair with your drone and you can quite seamlessly pair it with a second MLID so that you can get a control network of ground control points to independently validate your mapping data. So these two uh, MLIDs could communicate via their radio antenna here or via the uh, internet with an NTRIP protocol and you can interface with both uh, MLED devices, multiple MLED devices using the MLED Flow app on any wireless device. You can also use the online version of the app to interface with MLED products. The downside of MLED is that it doesn't seamlessly integrate with DJI drones. You do have to use some form of NTRIP solution to get real-time connectivity, but it does interface with other drones like Autel drones. The DJI antenna is seamless 
in its pairing with any DJI drone. It does not require much fiddling. It doesn't have much of an app, save for part of the Pilot 2 app where you configure the base settings under the RTK tab. You don't need to configure that much. It's doing most of its functionality by itself. It is somewhat limiting in its ability to act as a rover in the context of gathering independent control points to validate your drone survey. It can be used as a rover with older drones like the Phantom and agricultural drones like the Agris. It's not quick to pair with a secondary DRTK2 antenna. The fixed antenna height is pretty handy at 1.8 meters. It makes it so you never need to remember any other number and you don't need to take a tape measure with you to the field. Worth mentioning that this unit uses batteries, the WB37, that are interchangeable. You can, however, get AC power to uh, plug in underneath here if you want to keep this logging for multiple hours to get good RTCM data or just stay connected to ongoing drone flight activity. This has an internal battery only and it can be plugged into a USB source either uh, another outside battery or uh, wall outlet power. This has an internal battery that is charged with a USB-C cable. Overall, I would say these are both very, very good quality antennas. There is no difference in the accuracy of the data that's coming off of these. They're both gonna get you to that uh, mm, two to three centimeter absolute accuracy or better. I would say that for most projects that I undertake, the MLID works for me. I have a little bit more uh, need for separate validating survey in the form of ground points scattered throughout my mission area. Therefore, I would typically defer to the MLID over the DJI DRTK2. But if you were always relying on RTK with little to no need for independent ground survey on your site, the DRTK2 is better with that seamless integration to make your operations as smooth and efficient as possible. If you like this video, subscribe to our social media channels. And if you have any questions about these or other devices, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd be happy to help.